Good evening, welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okoro. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Tuesday again arraigned former National Security Advisor Sambu Dasuki and five others on fresh charges bordering on money laundering and criminal breach of trust. The former NSA, along with former Minister of State for Finance, Bashir Yugoda, and a former Governor of Sokoto State, Atahiru Bafarawa, and three others are on trial for allegedly squandering huge sums of money meant for supply of security equipment. They were arraigned on a 22-count charge before Justice Peter Afem of the Federal High Court in Abuja. After the charges were read to them, the accused persons pleaded not guilty. The trial judge then adjourned hearing in the bill application until December 16, 2015. He also ordered that the accused persons be kept in the custody of the EFCC until the next adjourned date. Dozens of members of the Islamic Movement of Nigeria on Tuesday embarked on a protest over the arrest and detention of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zakzaki. The protests were held in different parts of the country, with the largest march held in Kaduna State. Security forces were seen patrolling the entire city to prevent a breakdown of law and order. Other locations where the protests were held are Kano, Kebi and Bauchi states. The Nigerian Shites were also protesting the killing of their members during the two-day violent clash with the Nigerian army, while the army accused the sect members of attempting to assassinate the chief of army staff Lieutenant General Tukuburutai. The Islamic movement said soldiers opened fire on its members. The Islamic movement also claimed that over 500 of their members were killed by soldiers in Zaria Kaduna state. Meanwhile, the Nigerian army has denied reports that the leader of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, El Zagzaki, was arrested by soldiers at his residence and his wife killed. The general officer commanding one mechanized army division, Kaduna, Adeni Oyebadi, said the Shite leader is safe and in protective custody in a very secure facility. 13-year-old kid prodigy and documentary filmmaker Zurelo Duwale has officially launched her Dream Up, Speak Up Stand Up Foundation in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. The foundation, which is her first, was set up to promote education for children across the globe. I was present at that event. If I'm the president of an African country, I'll be able to affect that country and there's a few other African countries as well. She's a documentary filmmaker an advocate for education, especially for the girl child. She's traveled around the world to talk to global leaders on the importance of education. And she's just 13. And your name is Villa Jonathan. How much good luck do you think you have brought to your country? Zurelo Duole first made headlines at age 10 for interviewing influential personalities. She has now met with over 17 world leaders across the globe to talk about issues ranging from education to children's safety and, of course, making very positive and compelling documentaries about Africa. With our foundation, we won't have to wait for them so we can just fund these different... Another achievement this kid prodigy added to her growing list is the launch of her foundation, the Dream Up, Speak Up, Stand Up Foundation. It was indeed a dream come true as students, young entrepreneurs, Box office celebrities gathered to support Zuriel in making history as she launched the foundation in Lagos, Nigeria. One of the major highlights of the event was performance by students from schools across Lagos. With talents like this coming from the African continent, Zuria hopes her Dream Up, Speak Up, Stand Up Foundation will go a long way to make an impact in ensuring every child gets the chance to be educated. Well, the Dream Up, Speak Up, Stand Up project, I started when I was 10 years old, and I started it to speak to children about the importance of staying in school and getting a good education so when they get older, they'll have more options in life. Now, this year, I've spoken to... I've interviewed 17 presidents and prime ministers, and I've also spoken now to more than 23,000 children in 10 different countries, including Nigeria, Tanzania, Malawi, South Africa, Ghana, and Mauritius. Despite her young age, Zuria has won the admiration of so many notable individuals who spoke glowingly of her and pledged to support her foundation. 
I think she's an amazing woman. I mean, yes, she's young, she's 12, but I still, she's like a woman. I mean, you've heard her speak. She's so mature. She's so enlightened. She's so articulate. And I, I think this is, a, this is a huge step. This is how we want the next generation to be. She is definitely a, an amazing role model for people to emulate, for the young ones to emulate. And I think she should be encouraged and supported, definitely. She's interviewed 17 presidents. She's setting up a foundation to encourage girls to go to school and stay in school. What more can we do than to support? support her and you know what she wants to be president of some country whether it's US or Nigeria so we should be proud of her we should support what she's doing and you know in, in this way you encourage other girls that you can be what you want to be at any stage in your life so this is amazing this is awesome and um, this is a Nigerian girl making history while most kids her age want to go out and play Zurelo Duwale is out to ensure that through her dream up speak up stand up foundation she can sway the government to take more action on education Alega state high court has sentenced the former police divisional police officer shegu fabumi to 10 years in prison for killing a protester during the 2012 fuel subsidy march he was arraigned in may 2013 by the lagos state government on a seven count charge bordering on murder, attempted murder and causing grievous bodily harm. Fambumi, who was also dismissed from the Nigeria police force for the killing, was also found guilty of causing grievous bodily harm to three other persons during the protest, while an additional five year sentence for the shooting. The judge also announced that the 15 year prison sentence will run concurrently. The Council for Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren, says it will go ahead with hearing into the cases of two engineers indicted by the Lagos Corona over the collapse of a synagogue church building in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. Chairman of the Koren Registered Engineers Investigation Panel, Nuruddin Rafindadi, said this in, at a maiden hearing in Abuja on Monday. The six-member panel had invited the two indicted engineers, Oladele Ola Ogundeji and Akimbola Patirego, to appear before it over alleged professional negligence, which led to the building collapse. Although the two respondents were absent at the panel's proceeding, their lawyers presented a court order on the issue. The two engineers were indicted by the coroner's inquest for alleged criminal negligence over the September 2014 collapse of the Synagogue Church of All Nations building, which killed 116 persons. Most of them were South Africans. The Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja has annulled the election of the Speaker at Kwaibom State House of Assembly, Anikon Uko, who also represents Igbe Sikbo Asutan constituency. A three-man panel led by Justice Moshud Oredola upheld the lower court's decision that the election was characterized by electoral irregularities. The court has, however, ordered a rerun in the constituency within 90 days. At this point, I cannot force the judgment of the appellate court uh, since they have nullified the election and order for rerun. The same people that elected me are the people that will vote in the election. So uh, the victory is still there. I'm not shaking, I'm not bothered. I wouldn't want to fault the judiciary. I... I believe since they did not say that I was not the duly elected uh, person to represent the state constituency in the House of Assembly and uh, maybe the order for some other person to be sworn in. They said the election was uh, 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 yeah, and full of irregularities. So uh, let's go back. Uh, we contest the election. So the issue, I'm not here to join the issue with the judiciary or the INEC or the, anybody. My issue is with the people that elected me. So I'm going back home to tell them that the election is coming again within 90 days. And le let's go and test and see who really won the election. Nigeria's Minister for State for Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachiku, has been outlining the reforms being embarked in the Nigeria's oil industry. Addressing journalists in Abuja, Kachiko says emphasis will be placed on cost cotton. Cotton is a cost and efficiency issue, and uh, the, ideally, even when you mm -hmm. uh, have very high prices, you should be cutting your cost to increase your margins. But what has tended to happen is that when you have a lot of window pricing, you take things for granted. For example, some of the things that we're doing strategically now, the whole restructuring process is to level your cotton on your cost. Um, uh, all the all the elements of Ministry of Petroleum this year. We'll be looking at their total operations and see how do they deliver the same service or better service at, at, at the least possible price.
for the majors were engaging with them and being very astute in terms of asset management, so trim down costs were be becoming a bit more preferential in terms of in terms of cost driving uh, the investments that we make. So not all projects that are on the table will, will see the light of day if the unit price of oil from such those projects uh, do not come below a certain threshold. And at this sort of threshold we try to set is threshold below the twenty dollar barrel uh, mark. Uh, quite a lot of production is, is within the fourteen, fifteen dollar mark and, and those naturally joint venture acreages. But as you go into the PS is uh, the sort of climb run, and the challenge will be how do you continue those if ultimately the price of oil you know, doesn't justify that. So it's going to be a lot of drilling. It is possible. We're doing a lot of work. We're raising some very fundamental results in cost cutting. Uh, and we're going to continue to run that. But different from just the major cutting costs and us forcing them to do that, our whole operational network, how we manage the oil industry has got to change. Uh, it takes something like security. Every major, for example, has their own security apparatus. Now you've got to have an integrated security model. Um, we've got to increase on speed. There's always been a lap time between what uh, NCDMB does and what uh, NMPC does. And so the effect of that is unnecessary delays in terms of approval process. Now, uh, unknown to all of us, uh, every month that you delay a project, you're adding literally between 2 and 3% of cost to the outlay. So we've got to work in such a parallel mix, you know, uh, that, that our, our things are being done sequentially at the same time to, to begin to bring down the sort of cost. So it is a, it's certainly a focus area for us. Uh, we've seen that over the last four months of, of just looking at LMPC uh, operations. Uh, if, you look, if you look at the three reports we've published, you find that starting from a, a deficit uh, loss position of about 185 billion a month, uh, we're down to 12 million, uh, 12 billion, I beg your pardon, uh, in the last report. So the, 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 the losses are tumbling down. You can only do that largely through cost. We have not increased efficiency in production yet. That is coming from cost analysis. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has reserved judgment in a case challenging the ch election of Senators Bukola Saraki and Ike Kwere Madu as Senate President and Deputy Senate President, respectively. Justice Adini Ademola made the pronouncement after counsel to the parties adopted their written addresses. Four Senators Abu Ibrahim, Kabir Marafa, Robert Borofis and Suleiman Hunkuyi filed the suit challenge in the process that led to the elections of the two principal officers. Nigeria's Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has said the creative industry as well as culture have a great role to play in the ongoing diversification of Nigeria's economy, especially at a time of dwindling earnings from crude oil. Receiving the country director of the British Council, Kony Price, in his office in Abuja on Monday, the minister said the federal government would not restrict its efforts at diversifying the economy to agriculture and solid minerals. Mohammed identified inadequate knowledge of the capacity to translate the nation's abundant cultural heritage into a viable economy as the bane of the sector and therefore sought the assistance of the British Council to support his ministry to surmount the challenges. The Executive Vice Chairman of Niger Communications Commission, NCC Professor Omar Dambata, has criticized the poor state of broadband infrastructure in the country. Dambata insisted that the drawback poses the greater challenge facing Nigeria. Dambata, who disclosed this in Abuja at the prize giving ceremony of the winners of the nationwide essay competition on broadband stated that the problem stems from the fact that people do not appreciate the transformation that broadband is bringing to the country. He further said that the transformation from broadband will be comparable to the transformation that was witnessed in the launch of electrical power networks, adding that soon it will be unthinkable to think of life without broadband services. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll look at more stories. Please don't go away. Hello, you welcome. You watching the funny white man show, which is the biggest, the brightest, and the most entertaining show in Africa. Funny you white man. Funny for for white man. Funny white man. But this way you talk, you too much. Give me five thousand man that you. Too much. So you get to like, when you move along the street, ah, yeah, me should like there, I'm going girl. You know, my own people, ah, Charlie. 
Yeah, fine, it's fun. I enjoy it. And I'm one of those very few. I'm forever is taking it personal. Very good. I will listen to 160 million Nigerians are corrupt. How? I rather I'm looking for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a growth, and this is the time to build business and know the pitfalls and know what to do and what not to do. But there are months where you get business and months. You know how we do, how we turn up. <laughs> we know the way you did it. <laughs> 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 Hello, you welcome. You watching Trending Matters on the Funny White Man Show. Of course, they will bring you trending issues just to entertain and tickle your fancy. Welcome back here watching TV 316 News now. To business stories, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachiku, has urged member countries of the African Petroleum Producers Association, APA, to cut costs in order to improve their margins and bring their influence to bear on the global oil and gas production matrix. Kachiku made this call at a media briefing to promote the forthcoming 6th Africa Petroleum Congress, an exhibition built for Abuja next year. The minister stated that it was high time upper members embraced the restructuring processes with a view to providing services at the best possible price. Uh, I know the times when upper was a lot more powerful. Uh, I think they were probably more powerful when they were eight members than when they became the 28 members. Uh, and, and that's because uh, we failed to take advantage of, of size. Um, we've let volume be the speaker. Uh, and we need uh, to begin to look at that. Uh, Saudi Arabia does an average production of 8 million barrels a day with the potential for 9. And uh, if you add us, add and go and if you're the African country, you probably have one on the threshold of between 5 and 6. So not too far away. So collectively, you can actually bring some really serious influence. And that's one of the things that I, I did this time around to, to get to the consensus. And I never able to, to stay in the room right and work, to work in a way. So I think Africa needs to be more often, needs to strategize more often, needs to speak with one voice, needs to stop being self-competitive amongst themselves. I mean, that's fine to compete for both bringing in and cause and helping with enhanced technology. But you don't, you don't go to OPEC meetings and get yourself all depleted in different functions. So, so one thing I need is Samara was the first hold an African sub-meeting and get people aligned. Uh, and they, they became supportive in terms of things that we did. And that's what I think we need to do. If we continue to do that, and I, I agree with you that we haven't done that uh, as much as we do, uh, we should of course, but, but I think if we continue to do that, uh, we're going to see a lot more respect for the problem. Having said that, the general consensus is that Africa has always been seen like a non-aligned group. Uh, you have two main world uh, factions uh, or positions, really, in the open ground, uh, open meetings, and Africa is always the middle layer of everybody caught. But I, I think we need to do more than just sitting outside and hoping for to come We need to be able to enforce our own positions. We are probably the poorer members of the group, or the least developed members of the group. Um, um, we are probably the ones with the least efficiency in terms of management of our resources. And so we need to ask uh, be able to get more. Uh, when when prices are tumbling, we hurt probably more than anybody else does. Uh, so we need to be able to take that into cognizance in, in pro propelling positions for, for, for our member countries. Oil prices edged tentatively higher on Tuesday as a slump in near 11-year lows in the previous session triggered investors' buying appetite. Brent crude, the global benchmark, traded up 40 cents at $38.32 a barrel, while U.S. crude was trading at $36.49 a barrel, up 18 cents. Nevertheless, bearish sentiment remained strong, fueled by an OPEC decision earlier in December to abandon setting a production ceiling for the oil cartel and a likely rise in Iranian oil exports after sanctions are lifted. Now still on oil prices now, OPEC Secretary General Abdullah Al-Badri on Tuesday said current low oil prices will not continue and will change in a few months or a year. He added that any decision by the United States to export oil would not have further impact on oil prices. Speaking in New Delhi, he also said the oil producers cartel was looking for reasonable and fair prices. OPEC has been pumping near record levels since last year in an attempt to drive higher cost producers such as U.S. shale films out of the market. 
UN Human Rights Chief on Tuesday said Burundi has moved closer to civil war after insurgents attacked military camps in the capital last week. Following that attack, authorities responded with house searches, arrests and alert summary executions. Fighting in Bujumbura last week killed almost 90 people, the worst clashes since the military coup was fought in May this year. It follows months of sporadic violence and assassinations, mostly in the capital between supporters and opponents of President Pierre Nkurunziza. The latest round of unrest began after the president violated a peace deal that ended the civil war by seeking a third term in office. There are fears that the country may slide back into conflict after emerging from an ethnically fueled civil war. 10 years ago. A U.S. man from Maryland has been accused of receiving almost $9,000 to finance a terrorist attack in the United States. The FBI have confirmed Mohammed El Shinawi, who is 30 years old, is being held on a number of charges, including trying to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization. He received the money through a PayPal account and a Western Union wire transfer, the FBI said. Eshinawi also said while he understood the money he received from ISIS was to be used in some sort of domestic terrorist attack. He claimed he actually only used the funds to pay off bills and buy furniture. The Department of Justice has however said Eshinawi will make his first court appearance on Tuesday. Moving on to sports now, head coach of the Nigerian Under-17 national team, Emmanuel Amunike, has been nominated by the Confederation of African Football in the 2015 Coach of the Year category. He was nominated alongside five other Nigerians, in Kilechi Mwakali and Victor Simehen, who was nominated as the Youth Player of the Year. Also, Ngozi Ebere, who was nominated as the Women Player of the Year, and Azubike Okechuku and Etebo, Ogene Karu were both nominated as most promising talent as CAF revealed the various nominees for the 2015 awards. Meanwhile, four time African Footballer of the Year Yaya Toure was nominated for Africa's top award for the fifth time in a row with Gabon's Pierre Emerick Abumeyang and Ghana's Andre Ayu. Chelsea manager Jose Mourinho has hit out at his players for betraying his work during the 2 1 defeat to league leaders Leicester City. The defeat to Leicester leaves Chelsea in 16th place, one point off the relegation zone and 14 points off a Champions League place. Mourinho, who is now considered defeat in the race for a Champions League sport, has accused his players of letting him down as a fight to save their season. Chelsea's next match is against 19th place Sutherland on Saturday this week. We have come to the end of news now. We thank you very much for joining us. I am Thelma Okoro.